Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio. In this segment, we're going to be speaking with returning guest Spiro Rambatis. He's joining us here as president and CEO of Cyclocell Pharmaceuticals, a veteran of the industry and a de developer of novel therapies that target various phases of cell cycle control for the treatment of cancer. He's joining us here to basically talk about cell cycle inhibitor study in solid and uh, blood cancers with their uh, lead compound, Fedra. Thanks for returning, Spiro. How have you been? been very well. Thank you for having me. Well, it's been uh, quite a while since you were with us before, but as a contributor, give our listeners a bit of insight into uh, who Spiro Rumbatis is. Well, I've been in the uh, oncology drug development side of the drug industry for 37 years. This is an extremely difficult field, but one fraught with excitement if we can serve patients in need who are looking for options. Cyclocell is a company in the forefront, as you said, of the area of cell psychobiology with two drugs in the clinic. And I'm happy to give you an update on what happened in the last two years with our lead compound and the most recent entrance to the clinic, the number two compound as well. Well, it's my understanding that quite a bit has happened in those two years. Give us an update on FADRA and um, any other developments that uh, you feel are pertinent to our conversation. Well, we've been going through this incredible a difficult period of the pandemic, but uh, despite the uh, headwinds that are associated with enrolling patients in clinical trials, we found that uh, that was not an issue for cyclic cell, thanks to the appeal of our compounds for physicians and their patients. So we enrolled in the last two years close to 80 patients with the lead drug and half a dozen with the number two, which started very recently, and are now uh, poised in the end of October to report that first clinical data uh, in a major cancer meeting that will take place uh, in Europe. Mm -hmm. Uh, more importantly, the drug has shown activity against cancer cells, although we don't expect to show this early in phase one studies, the primary goal of which is safety. It's always gratifying and very encouraging to see early indications of tumor shrinkage and response. Tell us a bit about the study designs, if you would. Now, this is a phase one, two study. We're all trying to not only compress development times, but also justify to society that pharmaceuticals should be priced according to value, not price. What I mean by that is that we have to demonstrate uh, activity and clinical relevance of the drug relatively early in development, not only in phase three, but we might submit them for approval. This means that we are charged with the opportunity of developing a drug in a phase one slash two study, which means to take two studies that would normally have one and two year periods each compressed into one. This also eliminates a six month period in between the two studies and we got the FDA to agree to that design as they gave us the permission to go forward and have now reached the midway point, having finished the first pro program, which is phase one, and we'll report the data of that at the end of October. The other major important part of this study is the part two, which is about to start. In phase two, we'll test seven different types of cancer by anatomy, ranging from women's cancers and colon cancer all the way to lymphoma in the same protocol, which means that if we're successful, we can approach the FDA and consider the possibility, if sufficient activity has been observed, of an early approval using the accelerated approval pathway of the FDA. Well, tell us about FADRIT so that we can get a little understanding as to why this uh, this reevaluation is taking place. Well, first of all, FADRIT is a novel inhibitor of two enzymes that have a Nobel Prize behind them. This is in 2001, when the Nobel Prize for Medicine was awarded for the discovery of CDKs, cyclin-dependent kinases, and uh, enzymes uh, that are belonging to a family of multiple potential drug targets and the proteins that interact with these enzymes called cyclins. Cyclic cells are on the forefront of developing drugs that actually harness this mechanism to make cancer cells resensitized. What do we mean by that is that these cancer cells are smart and as we give them available therapies, after a certain amount of time, they lose activity, they lose sensitivity to the treatment. And we have relapse, patient eventually succumbs to disease, so we lose the benefit, society loses the investment we made in the original therapies given to such patients. The goal of Cyclas and other companies in this space is to lower the hurdle, make the cancer cell have become difficult to treat or resistant, again sensitive to additional therapies. It not only preserves the options for patients, hopefully prolong the survival, but also can create a better dividend for society from the investment it makes in discovering new drugs. So essentially, we're a leader in this field with a, a number of companies chasing us, uh, pursuing either CDK2 or CDK9, the two most interesting enzymes in this family at this point in time. We're pursuing the only drug that hits both enzymes at once. 
So one pharmaceutical, one medicine, getting both CDK2 and CDK9 at the same time, which we think has important advantages both for the biology and ultimately for patients. What about any toxicity concerns when it comes to FADRA? So we have not seen any in the oral study of FADRACYCLIB, or FADRA for short, that has recently been completed in 18 patients, uh, escalating doses went up five dose levels. We have not seen any dose limiting toxicities, which means that the drug is allowed to go one dose higher. Uh, FDA has recently given us the green light to do that. This is quite remarkable given the history of this class, which is a lot of toxicity, teaching us the possibility that much of that earlier toxicity seen in other molecules may be due to off-target effects i.e. not hitting CDK2 and CDK9, but hitting other things that we're not sure that these compounds were interacting with, in addition to either CDK2 or CDK9. Now, not seeing a lot of toxicity early on is not so exciting because we're here to treat cancer, not to make patients feel well only. So it's exciting when we have seen within the envelope of these 18 patients sufficient anti-cancer activity, not only in terms of early tumor shrinkage when the tumor doesn't grow anymore and perhaps shrinks a bit, but actually seeing partial response where the threshold is 30% improvement on the tumor size from the baseline of treatment. This was seen in both endometrial cancer as well as in lymphoma. So patients with both major solid tumors that fail current therapy and patients with lymphoma have shown response to fadrocyclib as a single agent. Meaning this drug has not only a wide therapeutic window given its lack of toxicity, but also has dramatically interesting prospects in major tumor types straddling both the solid tumor and the liquid tumor divide. Is your compound the only oral compound that is being considered at this time? No, there are two other companies, one very large multinational pharma and a smaller company like Cyclocell, Mm -hmm. also pursuing oral compounds. The first one, though, is only CDK2, and the second one is only CDK9 of the only CDK2 and 9 in one molecule. The reason we think this is very important is because evidence has now been published by multiple investigators in the literature showing that CDK2 is an escape mechanism if we inhibit CDK9. Think of it like squeezing the balloon and the cancer pops somewhere else. Mm. So inhibiting both is critical if we're to induce these cancer cells to commit suicide, much like happens with normal human beings who don't have cancer when the body has all proliferation and not let it get out of control, as is the case in cancer patients. You briefly spoke about being able to go up another level as far as dosing is concerned. Expand on the dosing aspect and the significance. Well, for the last 50 years when we gave chemotherapy to patients, essentially poisoning cancer cells, we were hoping, praying even, that we would not harm normal cells and cause toxicity. This proved to be a futile undertaking. Inevitably, as we go up in pursuit of more efficacy, we see a lot more toxicity. And then at some point, patients vote with their feet and tell the doctor, doc, whatever happens to me, I don't want chemotherapy. We're exactly at this point now in the beginning of the 21st century. So over the last decade, uh, certainly the last 20 years, but probably more the last decade, the tools of the whole genome mapping project at the Millennium have not been put to good work. And many molecules are being developed, like FADRA, on a precision medicine basis, which means that we only hope to give this drug for specific problems, not necessarily at the maximum tolerated dose. In fact, the FDA recently put guidance or advice to companies asking not only to tell them at what dose is the drug no longer tolerated, which is part of the legislative apparatus for getting a drug into the next stage of trials, but they also want to know the minimally effective dose where the drug is showing anti-cancer activity. So that's why it's important, according to the legislation, to test higher dose levels. We already know with FADRA that we can induce tumor shrinkage and response at lower dose levels. That's very exciting because we don't have to give the drug at the highest possible level. We may be able to be successful with much lower levels, which also saves money and ultimately resources for society to give to other patients who have unmet medical needs, only, not only those that we're testing in our clinical trials. Spiro, give us a website where our listeners can find much more information. Well, www.cyclacell.com is the best place to look. We're also on social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, and so on, as well as LinkedIn. So people that want to learn more about our work with uh, both FADRA and our number two drug, CYC140, Apollo like kinase inhibitor, can look at either of these sources. Spiro, I appreciate you coming back and lending us some more of your time. Looking forward to our next conversation as approvals are granted. 
Thank you very much, Neil. We have lots of interesting work ahead, but uh, we're starting to see benefits. So we're very excited about what the future may bring for Cyclosemin's project. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Spiro Rombatis. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.